Okay, in this video, we are going to look at a six mark practical based question that you typically get in OCR, often paper three. Now, these are the questions where you're given an unknown relationship, something you've never seen before, and often a practical situation that, again, you've never done, you've never seen, and you have to interpret it. So I've never done this question myself. Uh, the first time I saw it was when I printed it off. So I'm going to do this completely blind, but I'm going to give you the exact set of steps and the method that you need to be able to answer any single one of these questions. So pause the video now and take a second to read through the information. Now, in an OCR uh, A uh, paper, this is generally how they'll be presented. You don't generally get the following information. Um, but the example that I've taken this from is almost identical, but you do get these extra steps. But if you can remember these steps, you're doing pretty well because these are all of the sorts of things you should be mentioning anyway. Now, uh, this one sometimes is less relevant in OCRA, so I'm just going to put it in brackets, but I'll probably make a comment on it anyway because there's nothing wrong with saying it. And occasionally they, they will ask you for this. So, how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to start by doing a very basic uh, tactic, which is ABC, and it might sound basic, but it is going to help us answer all of these questions. I'm first going to annotate the question. I'm then essentially going to bullet point my answer. I will obviously write sentences that make sense, but I'm going to do it in a bullet point format. And then C, I'm going to check the question to make sure I've actually done everything I need to do. So let's start by annotating this question. Like I said, this is the very first time I've seen this question. But I've not even read through it in full. So a student investigates springs made of metal wire. The fact it's springs could be important. Uh, so we've got a cross-sectional area A. So I'm just going to write pi r squared or pi d uh, squared over 4. Uh, and then a metal wire. A student constructs several springs from wires of thickness T. So presumably if it's a thickness, that's likely to mean it's the diameter. So the fact that I automatically think of both of these things could be helpful because we generally, well, we can't measure the radius directly. We measure the diameter. So this is what we can measure. Each spring has a different cross-sectional area A, and obviously A we've, we've written down. How does the spring constant, so the spring constant is force per unit extension, that's the GCSE form, force per unit extension um, varies with A. It suggested the relationship between K and A is this. So K is my spring constant. And what's important about the spring constant? We're probably going to be asked to work this out. Now, I've I've kind of skim read. I am fairly good at skim reading, and it's a skill you should all develop, actively practice it. And I've noticed we are testing the relationship between K and A. So if we change this, how does this change? How does this change? So what I'm saying is if this is the what we're changing, if this is the independent variable, how does the dependent variable respond? So this is effectively what I'm trying to work out. So I'm fairly certain that's what I'm trying to work out. Rho is the density. Now density is going to be a constant for a material. So it's important to highlight the constants. N is the number of turns of wire, and we could obviously vary that, but here we're not investigating it, so this is a constant. Uh, what else? B is, so not B, beta is a constant, which we don't actually know anything about at the moment. And A is, well, this is the cross-sectional area, isn't it? So cross-sectional area, which we've highlighted. And then T is the thickness of the wire. So am I understanding this question correctly? So I'm going to look at the picture here. 
So if I look at the picture, the, the wire's almost this kind of shape. Usually wires are round. Here, it's kind of this shape here. So is it correct for me to say this? I'm going to pause the video and have a quick think about this. Okay, so I had to think for a few seconds, uh, and I've realized that it sort of does matter and sort of doesn't matter. I think I did sort of rush a little bit because the cross-sectional area is clearly labeled here. So that is clearly a circle. That is clearly true. The thickness, it is obviously going to be this. Whether or not the wire actually is a true circle or not, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be measuring the thickness in the same way. So maybe it is a diameter of a circular wire, maybe it isn't. In this case, like I said, it doesn't matter. So have I labeled all of these? Yes, I have. I'm going to... I probably should actually use a highlighter because that's probably easier than, than boxing it. That's going to be important because that's an unusual power. Uh, what else do I need to do? I also need to work out how I can determine a value for B. So I've got a couple of things to do. So what is going to be the general method for doing this? Well, what, when I do these kind of questions, I always, always, always start with the analysis. I might, might switch back to black so it's a bit clearer. And that's really important for me because at the moment, I've never seen this practical. I don't quite know what I need to do. I've, I, it's a spring, so I'm probably going to be extending it, probably going to be measuring the extension and so on, but I'm not sure. And there's probably some tricks, probably something to do with this that I could go wrong. So I'm going to start with the bit that is easy, all right, because it, you always follow a set formula. I know that I'm always going to be aiming to plot a graph. And I know that my graph is going to be a straight line through the origin. Uh, so I'm going to put expect. So I aim to plot a graph and I expect a straight line through the origin. Why do I expect that? Because I'm going to make it into a straight line through the origin because it is easy to analyze. I can then work out the gradients and work things out. So what, do, what needs to go on my axis? So there's not necessarily one correct answer here. There's usually two things you can say. So, but to do that, we need to make it into the format y equals mx plus c. Now, in this example, there is no intercept. And I know that because if I look at this relationship, there is no plus anything. So c doesn't exist. So I'm just trying to get it into the format y equals mx. So what am I doing? I know that I am going to vary or I'm going to change a and I know that I'm going to measure K. So that means I am going to make A is going to be equivalent to X. And K is going to be equivalent to Y. Because the, the thing you're changing always goes on the X axis. So I need to get my equation in the form K equals dot dot dot. So, oh, it's already there. That's really handy. So if, if, if it wasn't K equals, I'd have to rearrange, which you sometimes do. Here, we don't have to. So Y equals MX, K equals, uh, what is X? A. So that is 1 over A to the 3 over 2. And then M, which is the gradient, is beta T to the 4 over N. Okay, so this is y, this is m, and this is x. Right, you can do that with literally any formula under the sun. Doesn't require any knowledge of physics. It doesn't matter if you haven't got a clue what these these things are. You can do this. Okay, and you're guaranteed one or two marks. So, what am I going to plot? Well, on my y-axis, I'm going to plot k. And then in order to get a straight line, I need to make this 1 over a to the 3 over 2. That's actually quite bad. We're going to say a to the 2 over 3. All right. So 1 over 3, 1 over a to the 3 over 2 is going to be equal to a to the 2 over 3. Sorry. No, it's not. I've made a really stupid error. Uh, 
let me write it out here this is the same as a to the minus 3 over 2 sorry silly mistake so the the x-axis will be a to the minus 3 over 2 okay so I expect straight into the origin I'm going to make sure I plot this graph so I in my bullet point it's going to be aim to plot a graph k on the y-axis and a to the minus 3 over 2 on the x-axis I expect a straight line through the origin I've done my analysis I've said what I'm varying or what I'm measuring I've done my analysis I've clearly highlighted what's going on so this is probably the analysis done let's check the question so I haven't fully done this oh hang on a second I've got a determinant value for b so that's part of the analysis so finding beta so the gradient of the graph equals beta t to the 4 over n so beta equals the gradient times n over t to the 4 right I can tick that one off I've done it so super easy anyone can do this all right guaranteed some marks right now I need to explain the practical so I basically need to list all my variables so beta rho t a n and k and then i'm going to go through each of these in turn and talk about what they are so beta i've already done all right i've already explained how i'm going to find it rho is the density of the metal so if i wanted to find that i could uh, find the mass using a mass balance all right, so I can find the mass using a mass balance and the volume using the displacement can, uh, and then density is mass over volume. Or in reality, this is a whole other practical. I'm just going to say look up on the data sheet, which is probably actually acceptable because otherwise you're going to be writing far too much. T, this is the thickness of the metal. It might be the diameter. They've specifically said thickness, so I'm going to keep to that word. And we're going to measure using probably micrometers because it is quite small, but you probably could get away with vernier calipers as well here. A is the area, I'm gonna come back to in a second because that's one of my, my big things that I'm varying. N is the number of turns, which is, you're basically just gonna count these. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's easy to go one, two, three, four, five, six. There's, there's no tricks there. And then K is F over uh, GCSE again F over K, uh, X this is my spring constant so I'm going to need to explain these in more detail and that is basically going to now be my method isn't it so I'm going to uh, me uh, so what I'm going to do I've got a spring so this does require thought so I'm going to measure A by measuring the diameter using, I'm probably going to use vernier calipers here because they are suitable for larger measurements. The thickness is quite small, which is why micrometer is more suitable. The vernier caliper is a bit larger. Uh, I'm then going to I'm then going to work out uh, the extension of a spring. Is that what I want to do? I don't want to work out the extension. Yeah, I, I have to. I can't. I have to work out the extension. I know. So work out the extension by applying a force to the spring. Uh, e.g. 100 gram mass which equals 1 newton and subtracting the original length uh, from the, ex the extend extended length and then obviously I'm going to use a ruler uh, a millimeter ruler 
to measure the length. Now, if you if you really wanted to be safe here, you could talk about the fact that you would obviously set up a clamp stand, you would set up a spring, you'd apply uh, some masses which have a weight, you would uh, attach your ruler at right angles so it's all perpendicular. The only reason I'm not going to do this in huge amounts of details, I do feel like I've written quite a lot already. So I suspect they're not asking for the detailed method of Hooke's Law. They are just looking for a kind of summary. But if you're ever in doubt, you know, explain this in, in a bit more detail. Uh, and then, so I've worked out the extension. I've talked about how I measure force. And then K is obviously F over E. And then what do I need to do? I need to vary A by using a new spring but keep everything else constant. So I'm going to keep the density constant, so same material. I'm going to keep the number of turns constant. I'm going to keep the thickness constant. Okay, then I'm going to obviously, in, in real life, I would go back and I would do this, but I've already explained this, so I do not need to say it again. If, you would, if the question asked about safety, what can go wrong here? The spring could snap where safety goggles, you're putting masses on it. Make sure you've clamped it to the table, put it in the center of the table. Really just basic common sense uh, things here. Okay, so just to quickly summarize the steps that we are going to take, we are going to A, B, C. We're going to annotate the question, bullet point our answer, check the question, see that we've done everything. So here I will just quickly go through, have I actually basically ticked everything here? Have I ticked this, this and this? I have in this case. Uh, I'm then going to start with the analysis first. That's really important. I'm then going to talk about the measurement of variables because that is easier than the final bit, which is actually doing the method. If you, fo if you follow in this order, it's a lot easier than trying to start with the method first. I don't think I'd have had a clue what to do, but I managed to break it down by doing it in this order.